Hello, welcome to this video about sorting algorithms. Uh, so today I'm basically just going to go through uh, a couple of uh, algorithms that can help you sort lists by uh, uh, yeah by by value. Uh, so we'll assume it's an integer or a float point values, and you sort them from the lowest to highest. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing this. Uh, some are faster than others. Uh, it's much, the video is not really about learning how to sort lists because it's in Python when you do it, you would actually just use uh, a function, uh, typically a numpy function or uh, the inbuilt sort function in Python. Uh, but it's good to sort of understand how you write these algorithms up and how they work uh, to help you understand uh, other algorithms uh, and how to write them yourself. Uh, and I'll hopefully get you to also try to write up these uh, algorithms yourself. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So these are the algorithms we're going to show. And then we'll also uh, talk a bit about performance. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, I want to encourage you to uh, look at Project Euler. If you want to do more uh, fun coding exercises, uh, that's a place to start. Uh, they have a lot, a lot of them. All right. So uh, sorting is a very uh, central task computing. That's why there are many different uh, methods of doing it because uh, people have been working a lot on it and trying to make it efficient uh, and easy to do. Uh, and yeah, it's important because it's hard to keep track of data without sorting. If you sort of have just have a, a long list of the indices but they're not sorted, then it's really hard to get the one you want but if, if things are sorted then you can do really easy stuff like for example the the binary search uh, where you can split everything in half and uh, stuff like that um, yeah uh, the first algorithm we'll look at is the bubble sort uh, which relies on swapping elements iteratively uh, therefore we need a function for uh, swapping two elements in a list so it takes a list L and then an index i and an index j, and then it just swaps uh, the value at uh, index i with the value at index j. Uh, so it stores a temporary variable uh, with the value, uh, then it pops in a uh, value of j at uh, place i, and then the value j, it uh, pops in the temporary value. It's probably easier to just show the example. So here we have list 1, 3, 4, 9, 5, 9, 9 13. Uh, and then we want to swap the, the first element with the second element. And uh, the swap function does that. Uh, and you could also have uh, the fourth element or something. Yeah. And then you have that, that the last one and then you split those. Uh, yeah. And it sort of, it works. So it just takes L as an argument, and then it changes L. Uh, so it doesn't return anything, it just changes L. Uh, global scope. Uh, yes, now I'll show you bubble sort. Uh, so first, uh, the algorithm as a recipe or in, in pseudo code, we want to sort a list, us, list of numbers in place. That just means we want to uh, change the input argument, the list, uh, like swap is doing, so it changes L. Uh, and then we want to sort it from uh, lowest to highest. Uh, and the input is a list of numbers. The output is none, because we're just changing the list. Uh, and the way bubble sort goes about it, is you sort of start by having a list from 1 to n, and then you loop through uh, the first n minus 1 elements in the list, uh, where, so when you start, uh, then you swap, I think I have, uh, no, I don't, okay, uh, doesn't matter, yeah, okay, so, yeah, I can just show it here, okay, uh, here it is, so you start here, and then you, uh, go through until, uh, here, and what you do at each place is that you compare with the next element, and if uh, this element is larger than this element, then you will swap them. And uh, then you are here where 54 would be. And then you do the same, swap, 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 swap. And then when you end up here, uh, then you will compare with this number and swap. 
Uh, and then you will know that the last number is the largest number in the list. Uh, but then you just do it again where you stop here because you know this is the largest number and then when you uh, loop through all the elements the second time so now you're on uh, iteration 2 uh, after you've done that you'll know that the second largest number will be here and you ju just do that until you end up here and then you have sorted the whole list um, yeah uh, that's the bob sort algorithm there's also uh, so I just hide the answer. Uh, there's also a YouTube video, uh, which is mostly fun, but it actually shows you what is happening. It's a, of people dancing uh, a Hungarian folk dance while showing how the bubble salt works. Uh, you can watch that for uh, uh, intuition and fun. Uh, and then there's also a visualization uh, shot of uh, the bubble salt. Um, yeah. Alright, so now hopefully you understand the intuition. Now we're gonna write the code. Uh, so I encourage you to pause the video and try to write the code. Then I'll try to write the code, and then we can look at the the actual answer. Okay. Um, so we want to start the bubble. So, so pause the video now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, now I'll try to write the code as well. Loop through the first n minus one element. So we want to loop through. Uh, from the last element uh, uh, so we want to loop from n minus 1 to uh, to uh, 0 to 1 uh, i in range n minus 1 until swap the first two elements yeah we say it's 0 and then we're looping backwards okay and then we want to make another loop of k. This should be k, and this should be i. It does doesn't matter. Uh, I probably not do the exact same thing as the solution anyway. Uh, Rage k. So we're looping first. We're looping from uh, the length of the list and backwards, and then we're looping from the beginning to uh, whatever number we're hitting. Um, and then we we'll say, okay, if L i is uh, larger than L of i plus one, uh, then we want to swap them. Side the list and i and i plus one. Okay, let's see if this works. It does. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we're moving from n minus one to uh, zero. Um, and within each loop, then we're looping from zero to wherever we are in the first loop, and uh, and then we swap. If uh, if the next number is bigger than the number where we add, then we want to swap them. So we're making sure that the largest number always moves to the right. Um, okay, it looks uh, very similar. Uh, so, so this is just the function. Uh, it has a bit more, slightly more uh, documentation, which is nice. K starts being length of L minus one, and it's decreased by one until zero. Then, so yeah, this is the same, uh, and you get the same answer uh, with a nicely sorted list. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, hopefully got that right. Then, if you didn't, maybe watch the video again. Uh, go through the code again. Uh, and uh, oh, there's also an uh, illustration of what is happening. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it. Uh, but th this function just sort of does the same, uh, but prints out what is happening and how the list looks each time. Uh, so in the first iteration. Uh, you have to loop through all the elements in the list or loop through you have to do the swapping uh, for all the elements up until here uh, so what is happening is that we are in the beginning we have split it over here yeah so we start up up here step one uh, and then we want to loop through i 
to uh, k, uh, so from 0 to uh, k, which in this case is the index here, the second last index. And then we're just going through them. Uh, so we're starting here, then we compare these two, and we want to swap them. Is this one is uh, larger than this one? So that's what this condition do. And then we swap them, but we can see the 26 is smaller than 54, so we don't swap them. Uh, so we move to 54, and then we compare uh, 54 with 95. Uh, and uh, if that's larger, then we want to swap, but it's not larger. So uh, we move again, we don't do any swap. Uh, now we're comparing 93 to 17, uh, and now we're swapping. And actually, because 93 is the largest number, we're going to be swapping all the way down until we end uh, the loop. Uh, so now we've been through this entire loop, and we know that 93 is the largest number. Uh, then we do the entire thing again. Uh, compare these two, no swap. Compare these two, then we swap. Then we compare these two, no swap. And then we compare these two and actually swap, and then we go all the way down. Uh, because 77 is the second largest number. Uh, yeah, and then you can just sort of follow uh, follow the algorithm using this print statement. Cool. Uh, so that was one way of sorting. It's, it's not the most efficient way, uh, but it has a funny name, and it's sort of relatively easy to understand. Uh, so the insertion sort is uh, uses insertion instead of uh, sort of swapping each element. Uh, and what that means is basically that it starts out by saying, uh, sort of has a, con it's con sort of constructs a swapped, no, a sorted list, and then it inserts the elements of the original list into that, into this new sorted list while keeping the list sorted by inserting, uh, the numbers at the correct places. Uh, I think it's easier to just show from this uh, illustration that you sort of start off assuming uh, 54 is a sorted list of one item, which is true because there's only one item, so it's, so it's sorted. Uh, and then you want to include the next element of the list inside your sorted list. Uh, so you insert that at the correct place. So that would be as the first element because uh, 54 is larger than 26. Then you want to insert 93. Uh, that would be as the last element, because it's the largest number. Then you insert 17, that would be as the first element, because it's a smaller number. And you can see this list keeps on being a fully sorted list from top to bottom, because you keep inserting uh, the new numbers at the correct point. 77 needs to be the second largest number. Uh, 31 is the third smallest number. And you know, it goes on like that. Uh, and uh, this is how it's sort of can be written as an algorithm in pseudo code. Consider the second element, insert it correctly in the list of the numbers before the second element. Consider the third element, insert it correctly in the list of the numbers before the third element. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I'll just hide the code. Uh, I think that's, yeah. Uh, so then you can see the answer. Uh, and now if you want to try to do it yourself, which I encourage you to do, uh, then pause the video. Uh, I'll also try to write it uh, afterwards, uh, and then we'll, we'll look at the answer. Uh, so pause the video now. Okay, uh, hopefully you had a go. Uh, now I'll try uh, to write it, so you can see sort of how it would happen. Uh, so first we just, we want n. We usually want the length of the list. Uh, and now we're going to loop a loop from the second element to the last element. Uh, uh, k in range from the second element to the last element. Uh, Want to know the value? What are we looking at? Uh, k, and then we're going to store. Uh, so now, now we have the value of the element we're looking at. So this is all these elements that we want to insert into the list. Uh, and now we want to do, now we want to insert it correctly in the list. So we want to look at all the elements in L from zero up to, but not including K. Uh, uh, and we, there's multiple ways to insert it correctly. Uh, one way, the way, one way to do it is to sort of move 
Uh, if you start for example here, you have 31. Uh, then you move and you go from the, from the last element of the sorted list and you move everything to the right until you hit something that is smaller uh, than your, uh, your value. And then you have sort of, you've switched everything, switched, ev yeah, switched everything to the right. And uh, then you insert uh, 31 into this new spot. Uh, so we want to loop uh, backwards. So we're starting at i uh, or at k, uh, wherever that is. And then we say while i is larger than zero uh, and uh, the value has to be smaller uh, than wherever you are in the list. Um, then we want to continue this loop. Uh, so this is the switching everything to the right. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to switch, for example, 31. Then we want to switch all the elements in this list that are larger than 31 uh, to the right. Uh, let me say uh, this one is equals to. And this is basically how you switch it to the right. And you, of course, want to update i each time, uh, making it smaller as we go along. And then once you switched all the numbers to the right, then you want to insert uh, the value at the point where you reached and where there will be an, uh, an empty spot. In the list, it will not actually be empty. Uh, so sort of what we're doing here is that we're storing 31 uh, and then we're assigning 93 here. So there'll be 93 both places. Then we're moving to 77, so we're assigning 77 here. Uh, so that's will be 77 here, but then we're moving here and then we say, okay, this is also bigger than 31. So we assign it here. So we have 54 both places. Then we move to 26 and see, okay, that is actually smaller than 31. So we break out of this while loop and then we have two places uh, with 54. So we insert 31 here. Uh, so that's uh, what's happening. Uh, I think it should work now we get a, a nicely sorted list. Uh, so that's cool. Um, and here it is uh, with a bit more documentation. Uh, and you want to skip the first element. Uh, yeah. And this is all the same. Insert column value. And you can see that the list gets sorted the same way. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, and yeah, there's this, uh, so insertion sort is slightly uh, faster or more efficient than bubble sort, because uh, you're doing this, uh, you're not continually swapping two elements in the list. You're sort of just moving elements and then doing one insertion, so you don't have to swap at each place. So, so that would be another way to sort of insert 77 correctly into this list, for example, would to be continually swap these two then swap 77 to 45 and then you, oh not swap, yeah, okay, so just swap these two and then compare these two. Uh, and for example with 31, then you would be swapping all the way down here. While here you can just sort of move things to the right and then insert uh, the value correctly. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that sort of makes it a bit more efficient. Uh, and it also utilizes if the data is, is already partially sorted, it benefits from that because you're doing a uh, fewer insertion basically. So uh, the next uh, sorting algorithm we're going to look at is uh, quick sort, which is actually the sorting algorithm that uh, the standard sorting algorithm of uh, NumPy uses when you sort an array. Uh, so it's a uh, very efficient, it's the most efficient of the ones we're going to look at today. Uh, NumPy does it better because it's implemented better uh, using uh, C and Cyton. That doesn't matter. So it's, it's still quicker to use NumPy, but this is actually pretty quick. Uh, it also requires sort of two different things. Uh, so it requires that you know how to do partition first, which is a separate problem, but quick sorts just sort of use partition multiple times in a smart way. Uh, but so first we're going to uh, look at partition, which uh, sounds not useful when I tell you what it is initially, but it's really useful for quick sort. Uh, so you want to permute, permute or permutate 
change a list uh, a bit and then return a split point uh, so an index uh, such that all elements before the point of the list is larger than or equal to the first element of the original list uh, so it's basically you're taking uh, some uh, some number in the list and in this case it'll be the first element and then you want to change the list so that you, you can partition it in two with all the elements that are larger than this first element and all the elements that are uh, or all the elements that are smaller than this first element and all the elements that are larger uh, Yeah, so this should be smaller. Yeah, this should just be that. Uh, so it's that all the elements before the point is smaller than or equal to the first element's original list, and all the elements after are strictly larger. Uh, so you basically what you're doing is you have some long list and you want to split it in two with uh, elements that are larger and elements that are smaller. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the input is a list of numbers, and you just choose the number you choose. It's just going to be the first number on the list because you're assuming it's sort of not sorted at all. Uh, and the output will be the midpoint. Uh, so uh, you change the list that you're looking at, and then you also uh, on that midpoint split point, uh, and then you also output uh, the index of where the split point is. Uh, Right. And so how do we do this? Uh, you sort of attack it uh, from both sides and then you uh, each time that you uh, uh, run, you, so you're sort of moving from both sides and then you're looking uh, from, from the left side of a good food like this. From the left side, you want to find the first element that is larger than the split point. Uh, and from the right side, you want to find the first element that is smaller or equal to the split point. And if that's true, then you want to switch them around. Because uh, you can sort of say, okay, we're looking at 54. Uh, you want to find the first element that is larger and the first element that is smaller or equal. And then you want to switch these two around. Uh, uh, so this is, of course, not larger. So you move. So you move to 93, uh, and uh, this is larger, so you just stop at 20, and then you want to split, uh, switch these two around, so it's that you're moving 93, which is larger than the split point, to the right side of the list, and you're moving 20 to that which is smaller, to the left side of the list. And now you can just continue from here, from right mark and left mark, and move inwards. So you look at 17, that's smaller, then you look at 72, okay, that's bigger. So we stop there. And then from the right-hand side, we look at 55, okay, that's larger. And then we look at 44, and then, okay, that's smaller. So we can switch these two around as well. Uh, and now we have this list, and now our left mark is sort of uh, 77, and our right mark is 31. Uh, so they've moved opposite each other. That's... Yeah, so, so that's not how it is at the time. So first you split these two and then you have your left and right markers sort of on top of each other. Uh, and that has to be moved to the left, but you're sort of already there. So you stop at the right mark, but the left mark keeps moving to the right. So uh, it moves past the right mark and then you stop because you sort of you found the split point now. Uh, and that's right here. Uh, yeah, and then what you do then uh, in this algorithm is that you move 54 here and then you mark this at the split point. Uh, technically, you also just have the split point here and say all of these elements are smaller and equal to the 254. Uh, but it's helpful for when you're actually using quicksort to have switched elements around. Uh, Yes. Uh, so that is partition. Uh, and if you are uh, fired up and ready to go, uh, I think you should just stop the video and try to write the code. It's a bit more tricky. Uh, 
and I'm just gonna show you it afterwards. So yeah, if you're fired up and you you had uh, good success with the previous, then I think you should try. Otherwise, we can also just go through it together. But uh, yeah, pause the video if you want to. Cool. Now I'll show you uh, the actual code uh, of how it's done. Uh, so there's a documentation, which is nice. Uh, and then in this function, we'll sort of have the full list, but allow the function to do it on a subsection of uh, the list. Uh, so for now, just imagine that first is zero and last is uh, uh, the size of the list minus one. So you're sort of partitioning the full list. Uh, the reason we want this is to make it work for quicksort later on, uh, or work better for quicksort later on. So we start by getting our split value. Uh, so this is the value of the first element, which we want to split the remainder of the list on. Uh, then the left mark will be uh, the index of the most left uh, element that we're looking at initially, which is just the second element, and the right mark will be the last element uh, as, input, as an argument. Uh, then we set done equal to false, because uh, we're not done splitting the list, and then we have this while loop. Uh, and then you want to find the left mark first. You would want to make sure that it's not has not passed the right mark. Uh, and then you uh, want to make sure that the value is less than and equal to or equal to split value. And then you just increment incre increment one up each time. Uh, so basically, what you're doing is you're just moving the left mark one up each time until you find a value that is uh, higher than the split value, because then you want to do uh, the splitting back and forth. Uh, so that's how we find uh, the new left mark. And the right mark is the exact opposite. You're moving from the utmost, uh, highest number, and then moving down until, uh, until the value is uh, lower than the split value. Uh, and you still want to make sure that you're not passing. I mean, you want to stop incrementing as soon as you passed. Uh, and then you check that you're not done. So you're not passed right mark and left mark. And otherwise you swap uh, left mark and right mark. Uh, so yeah, it's sort of the same as the picture up here. Uh, or it is the same as the picture up here, just in the actual code. Uh, and it works. Uh, so this is the original list. And then we want to split point it uh, or partition it uh, and get the split point out, uh, which means that the new list has now changed because uh, it sort of it moved the elements around and we're splitting around uh, the first element, which is 54. Uh, and then we can sort of print out the split. So we print out uh, uh, the elements in the uh, first list and the second list around the split point, and we see like all these elements are equal to 54 or le uh, smaller, and all these uh, elements are uh, equal to 77 or larger, uh, or uh, equal to 54 or larger. So no, no, they're just, e sorry, <laughs> they're just larger than 54. Uh, yeah, okay, so now we can do this. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's, it's intuitive for you why this would be good for sorting. Uh, it wasn't for me initially, but the idea is sort of that you keep partitioning or splitting up the larger list into uh, into smaller lists that are easier to sort of sort and control, uh, and sort of splitting up into large numbers and smaller numbers. And uh, what and this is sort of what Quicksort does. It just does it uh, recursively and sort of iteratively. Uh, yeah, recursively, I would say. So you sp you take the original list, then you split it between some numbers that are larger and some numbers that are smaller. Uh, and then for each list, you just do that again. Uh, so you, you, you make a list with large numbers and a list with small numbers, and then you take the list with large numbers and split that in into two lists that are also sorted, uh, or not sorted, but sort of large numbers, small numbers. And then you keep doing that until you only have one number left. Uh, and when you've done that for all the sub uh, lists, then you actually have a, a sorted list. Uh, so what would happen here is sort of we split this list and then you would do the partition again on this list. So split around 77 
uh, which would basically just means that you swap these two and the new split point is uh, here at 77 uh, and then you can see that you would have a sorted list uh, the same would happen here it just takes a few more uh, iterations so you split around uh, 31 uh, which basically just move means that you would move 31 up here uh, and then you would have a list of these numbers and a list of these numbers and uh, these would already be sorted but you, you would use the partition algorithm on those and then it would be sorted like this then you would have 31 here and you would have these three numbers uh, to the left and you would do the partition again and sort them out uh, so uh, once you have the partition uh, algorithm then the quick sort algorithm is actually really really quick uh, it's just recursively partitioning the list and the sublist when splitting at the split point uh, to the list is now sorted <laughs> uh, so you have the quick sort uh, function which just takes l and then we sort of create a sub function which takes which takes the arguments uh, first and last uh, because we want to be able to quick sort sub lists of the original larger list uh, first we want to make sure that the sub list what we're looking at is an actual list so first has to be smaller than last uh, and then we partition uh, the list uh, that is between first and last and then we quick sort uh, the left part and the right part of that list uh, and you can see that this gives us a nicely sorted list and down here is sort of a visualization of that uh, so here uh, it's a partitioning on the last element uh, but you can see it's still sort of it works so it's and then it goes to the second half the partitions the partitions and the partitions and you get a sorted list out of it Yes, uh, and this is sort of, it's a bit more abstract or a bit more relying on sub functions and stuff like that, but it's actually more efficient uh, because of the memory usage and the number of operations. Uh, and it's also used by uh, NumPy, but NumPy has implemented it in a slightly different way. Uh, yes, uh, if you want to learn more about sorting algorithms, uh, one place to start is here. Uh, which is linked to uh, a site that talks about it. Uh, in the advanced section, I'll compare the performance of the different methods. I've al already sort of alluded to it a bit uh, during the video. Uh, and I will give the spoiler, if you don't want to watch the advanced uh, section, that sort of uh, the quick sort is the best of the methods with us today. But uh, implementation in Python packages are typically better than anything you can do yourself. So the uh, NumPy implementation is much better than writing it in the uh, normal Python code. Uh, and that's just the way these packages work. So it's typically better if you have some officially built package uh, because they, there's like a bunch of extra tricks and a, a lot of the NumPy stuff is uh, written in uh, C or Cyton, uh, which just makes it faster. Um, but it's still good to know these algorithms and sort of understand how it works and it will help you become a better programmer. Okay, so thank you for watching and uh, I'll go through the, the section where we compare the performance of the different algorithms. So uh, we'll talk about bubble, insertion, quick sort, and quick sort as implemented in NumPy. Uh, we create first an array of uh, different numbers that are increasing and these will be, so we want to uh, check how fast these algorithms are for different length of lists. Uh, and for each uh, length of a list, we also want to perform the algorithm multiple times to uh, test the timing. This is just to get a consistent estimate of uh, how long time it takes um, to perform this operation. Uh, yeah, uh, this is we pre-allocate vectors uh, to store results. So we just have for each uh, method, we just have a, a vector uh, that can store how much time it took to sort this uh, a list of 100 elements 50 times uh, yeah and we set a seed 
uh, to have consistent uh, results if we do this again. Uh, yeah, and then for each uh, number of elements, we want to create a uh, big K uh, lists or arrays. Uh, so uh, this L bubble, for example, will be a list of capital K size where each element is a NumPy array uh, of, uh, in the first loop, it will be a NumPy array of 100 size of a, or 100 elements. And then will be sort of 50 uh, different NumPy arrays. Uh, and then we'll, we'll do that for each of these. Um, yes, and then we do we just time it using this uh, time page. Uh, and we'll just time uh, Python doing uh, the algorithm 50 times and then uh, store the full time. Uh, yeah, and we'll only do the bubble sort for the smaller list because it's very slow. Same with the insertion sort. For quick sort, we'll do it for sort of medium length lists uh, and we'll do it for all of the different lists uh, with the NumPy implementation. And the NumPy implementation is because this is stored as NumPy arrays. It's just uh, using the method uh, dot sort, uh, which sorts uh, this array. Uh, yes, and then uh, this final chase just to check that uh, the sorted list results in the actual same uh, sortation, uh, which means that the sortation has been done right. Uh, yeah, and you can sort of it's sort of a logical following that. You check L quick, uh, so the quick sort you check against L bubble and insertion for the ranges where we have done the sortion, sortation for L bubble and insertion. And then afterwards you check whether or not uh, the NumPy sorting is the same as L, uh, the quick sorting, uh, which it likely is. Uh, and then here we just plot, also needs to run, uh, but we plot a, a line plot uh, where it's like the length of the lists uh, or the number of elements in the lists on the x-axis and how long time it took to run uh, on the y-axis. And you can see that the bubble sort is extremely inefficient and sort of like very uh, fast, it becomes very slow or very quickly it becomes very slow. Insertion is a bit better, but still like way, way worse than the quick sort and way, way worse than the, the quick sort in NumPy, which sort of just looks like it, it's constant at zero. It's not really constant at zero. Uh, you can sort of zoom in and look at, if you go up to list of 15,000, then you can see that it takes 0 0.03 seconds uh, compared to here, where it sort of took two seconds to do a list of 500 with the bubble sort. Uh, yeah, so the takeaway is complexity matters, but implementation also matters a lot. Because, uh, so if that's the difference between these two, is it's the same algorithm, so it's the same complexity, uh, but NumPy just has better implementation than what we can do here in raw Python. Uh, yes, thank you for watching.